so we move on to the second step of extraction of aluminium that is the electrolytic reduction of alumina now alumina alumina as we saw is nothing but aluminium oxide so aluminium oxide is nothing but alumina so how is it done so the electrolysis takes place of pure alumina so this pink color solution what you can see is has got pure element so the electrolysis takes place is done in a steel tank and in a steel tank this gray color can you see this tank gray color tank which i am showing in the laser pointer please follow the laser pointer so we take a iron tank or a steel tank now this tank iron tank if has got a graphite lining on the inside can you see this graphite lining this black color graphite lining which i am showing with the laser pointer this gra you know this graphite lining on the inside and this graphite lining which is there on the inside acts as the cathode cathode means the negative electrode what is cathode negative electrode so this so you have a iron tank which is your main vessel and on the inside of the iron tank they have a lining they put a layer of graphite which is can you see this uh, inside lining is connected can you see if you follow this point uh, my laser it is connected to the negative terminal the you know, shorter bar can you see the minus here can you see the minus so this graphite tank is connected to the negative terminal so that's why this graphite tank acts as the acts as the cathode and this set a set of graphite rods can you see a set of graphite rods a set of graphite rod which is dipped in the molten electrolyte acts as the anode so in this alumina this is this tank is filled with alumina can you see this pink color solution this is alumina okay this is molten alumina it is what molten molten means melted alumina okay this is what we obtain no from that concentrated uh, the process no so in this you put graphite rods this yellow colored rods they are graphite rods and graphite rods are what rod they are acting as the what they are acting as the anode why anode why are they after the anode because can you see this graphite rods if you see the, all these graphite rods can you see this these three graphite rods they are all connected to this long terminal no tall this positive terminal no? longer bar that bar is called the positive terminal so because it is connected this graphite rods are connected to the positive terminal here it is they act as anode and this this graphite lining on the inside is connected to the negative terminal that's why the inside lining will act as the cathode okay so i hope it is clear these are rods graphite rods and this is the graphite lining graphite lining okay why graphite because we know graphite is a very good conductor of electricity that's why they are used as electrodes now cryolite and fluorspar are added to the mixture of alumina so in this mixture in this this is the the main thing here is alumina this pink color thing what you can see electrolyte that is a mixture of alumina cryolite and fluorspar and fluorspar is added now why it is added this is added so that we saw that the alumina melts at 2000 degrees more than 2000 degrees celsius the alumina alumina not aluminum i am saying alumina alumina means aluminum oxide so be careful alumina alumina is different and aluminum is different so this alumina melts at more than 2000 degrees celsius and that's why we add cryolite and fluorspar so that the melting point is reduced to almost 1000 degree celsius now when the electric current is passed through this through this solution or through this alumina molten alumina okay with the help of this setup what happens on passing the current the aluminum the aluminum metal is deposited where will where will, where will it get deposited the aluminum so first and first you should understand the alumina aluminum oxide will break into aluminum and oxygen yes when the because it will get electrolyzed no the alumina or the aluminum oxide will break into aluminum and oxygen what will happen to the aluminum the aluminum will go and settle where think aluminum aluminum is a positive positive metal where will the metal go uh, it will go to the cathode this lining okay and can you see this brown color thing down here so the aluminum will deposit at the cathode and it will come out through this outlet 
the aluminium the liquid aluminium or, or the melted aluminium will pass will come out through this small pipe or outlet and what will happen to the oxygen which is oxide ions the oxide ions will go and deposit on this graphite rods on this graphite rods clear they will deposit on the graphite rods and the clear so this so where will the aluminum aluminum will deposit on the cathode the, the inside graphite lining which is called as cathode and uh, the and the oxygen will re, will deposit on the graphite rods now there is a small problem what will happen as a result of this aluminum will come out from this we are interested in the aluminum the aluminum can be removed from you know this melted the liquid aluminum will slowly slowly come through here and come out what happened to the graphite graphite rods there is a problem because this oxygen gas which is released uh, which is released during this electrolysis uh, and which is getting deposited on the graphite rods uh, this, what is graphite graphite is nothing but what carbon because graphite is a allotrope of what carbon you learned last year no in the 13th lesson carbon an important element graphite is a allotrope of what carbon so this graphite or this carbon which is in the graphite this carbon will react with the oxygen to form carbon dioxide to form carbon dioxide and as a result this graphite rods will slowly get eroded eroded matlab it will become start breaking down no becoming thinner and thinner why it will know how soil gets eroded soil erosion you heard of soil erosion the top layer of the soil getting washed off so also the top layer of all this graphite rod which is dipped in the solution in this aluminum alumina solution will get slowly slowly eroded why because the oxygen which is liberated at the graphite rods will react with the carbon which is there to form carbon dioxide gas and that's why these graphite rods have to be replaced or no replaced from time to time okay every now and then you have to keep on replacing this graphite rods because of this problem because of this problem so i hope this is uh, clear to you boys i hope this is clear to you so let's move on so i'll just show you some uh, we'll go to the next slide so dear students this is the whole uh, what do you call explanation which i just now gave you i explained the diagram to you if you remember okay how is this electrolytic reduction done now you can pause the video here and if you want you can read through it you can read through we saw how molten the aluminum which is molten melted sinks it is heavier than the electro it sinks it comes it goes down no remember it settles down and it is removed from that outlet if you remember no it is removed from that outlet you can pause the video here and go through it i have already explained to you this so i'll go to the next slide i'll show you the reactions taking place the cathode and the anode so what happens here is as i this is also this is the reaction i wanted to show you all anode what happens anode the oxide ion give it oxide ion will give away electrons to form oxygen remember i told you the whole idea how did oxygen become an oxide ion how did oxygen become an oxide ion or a negative ion because he had taken electrons now to again go back to its original gaseous state he will now give away the electron he will give away that's why that this minus 4e minus 4 electrons to form oxygen ions what about aluminum how did aluminum become positive ion aluminum atom how does it become positive how does the atom become ion metal ion, metal atom becomes a metal ion by giving electrons we had given three electrons aluminum had given three electrons so now he will take back the three electrons that's why it accepts that's why written plus here it accepts the three electrons and goes back to its original state but it will be liquid state because i told you the temperature is quite high more than 1000 degree celsius that's an aluminum melts at less than 1000 degree celsius so since the temperature around 1000 degree aluminum will be obtained in the molten state liquid state that's why it goes and settles down and it comes out to that small pipe which i showed you if you remember okay if you don't remember you can go back to your uh, earlier screen and you can see it you can rewind the video and see it i hope this is clear and we saw this oxygen gas which is released at the anode at the graphite rods 
they erode can you see here the word erode they get eroded graphite ore gets eroded due to oxidation what is oxidation the carbon which is there in the graphite gets reacted with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and it gets eroded and so they have to be changed or replaced or replenished from time to time so i hope this uh, electrolytic reduction of alumina is clear to all of you what we will do is we will now see a small video of the on the extraction of aluminium so it will be more clear to you it will be like a revision also and you will see it no and videos will make it more interesting and enriching so let's see extraction a of aluminium symbol of aluminium is al it is a silvery white metal with an atomic number of 13 Its electronic configuration is 283 and its valency is 3. The main ore of aluminum is bauxite Al2O3.H2O which contains approximately 30% to 70% Al2O3 that is alumina The remaining portion is made up of gang consisting of sand silica that is SiO2 iron oxide that is Fe2O3 etc Extraction of aluminum consists of two steps One concentration of ore that is conversion of bauxite into alumina by byers process two electrolytic reduction of pure alumina to get aluminium step 1 concentration of bauxite crude bauxite ore is crushed and then treated with hot concentrated caustic soda solution that is naoh solution in a tank called digester under high pressure for 2 to 8 hours at 140 degree centigrade to 150 degree centigrade aluminum oxide being amphoteric in nature dissolves in aqueous sodium hydroxide resulting in the formation of water soluble sodium aluminate this process dissolves silica that is sio2 and alumina in aqueous sodium hydroxide leaving behind undissolved iron oxide that is fe2o3 in the solution which can be separated by filtration the filtrate containing sodium aluminate and silicate is diluted with water and then cooled to 50 degree centigrade this gives gelatinous precipitate of aluminum hydroxide that is aloh thrice leaving behind sodium silicate in the solution this precipitate obtained is filtered washed dried and ignited at 1000 degree centigrade to get alumina that is al2o3 step 2 electrolytic reduction of alumina this process is carried out in a steel tank which is lined with carbon graphite that acts as the cathode hanging inside is a set of carbon graphite rods that act as anode dipped in molten electrolyte melting point of alumina is very high greater than 2000 degree centigrade 
cryolite ALF3, 3NAF and floor spar CAF2 are added to alumina in order to reduce the melting point of the mixture to about 1000 degrees centigrade. On passing electricity, aluminium is obtained at the cathode. Being heavier than the electrolyte used, molten aluminium sinks to the bottom of the tank from where it is removed periodically. Oxygen liberated at the anode reacts with carbon anode and forms carbon dioxide due to which the depleted anode is to be replaced from time to time. Extraction of metals of medium reactivity. The metals in the middle of activity series, zinc, iron, lead, etc. are moderately reactive and usually present in nature as sulfides or carbonates. As reduction of oxides to give metal is easier, these are first converted into their oxides. Depending on the type of the ore, that is, whether it is a sulfide ore or carbonate ore, the ores are processed differently to produce the metal oxides. Sulfide ores are converted to metal oxides by the method of roasting. It involves heating strongly in excess of air. Carbonate ores are converted to metal oxides by the method of calcination. It involves heating strongly in limited air. The oxides formed are then reduced to metals by suitable reducing agent such as carbon. Highly reactive metals like sodium, calcium, aluminium etc. are also used as reducing agents as they can displace the metal of lower reactivity from their compounds. Example. Manganese dioxide is heated with aluminium powder, reducing it to metallic form. This reduction reaction evolves a large amount of heat and the metal is produced in the molten state. This type of reaction is known as a thermite reaction. Another example of a thermite reaction is the reaction of iron oxide with aluminium to give iron and aluminium oxide.